there are many theories of why the German immigration occurred and they have been explored extensively. The three most common reasons center around land ownership, lack of religious freedom, and forced military service. These three situations in the German homeland in the mid-1800s is the basis for most of the immigration of individuals and families to the New World. In Germany in the 1800s, very few people owned land. The custom was that the oldest son always inherited the land. If there was no son to inherit it, it was the custom that when the oldest daughter married, her husband's surname was changed to hers to indicate that that farm ownership had been retained in the family. The other children received nothing and were forced to become laborers called hirelings who basically worked for others. These individuals had no chance of ever owning land and they worked for meager wages wherever they could find a job. As stories of large areas of land available in the New World spread, many decided to leave their homeland with the hope of experiencing a better life in America. During this time span in Germany's history, religious freedom was being denied to the devout Catholics who had practiced their religion for generations. The Kaiser Wilhelm, a Protestant, began closing religious houses and forbidding public worship. Again, as word spread and was received from relatives and friends about the new Catholic settlements in America, many decided to leave Germany to seek that religious freedom. The third reason for the German immigration centered around military service. The drafting of all men into Kaiser's army was mandatory, and many felt the need to immigrate, immigrate rather than be forced into that military. Many felt that enduring the hardships of relocating to America far outweighed the certainty of serving in an army that they did not believe in and that did not allow for religious expression. Bishop Loris arrived in Dubuque in 1839 and he had been assigned the task of establishing a diocese in this new frontier west of the Mississippi River. He actually wrote letters back to Germany telling about the wonderful land, the freedom of religion, uh, no army, that type of thing, and so he was a big draw to bring the Catholics to this area. One of the first groups of Catholic settlers recruited by Bishop Loris was five families that had emigrated from Germany in 1833 already and had settled in the Munster, Ohio area. After 10 years of being in Ohio, the settlers began to encounter an anti-Catholic sentiment. They also had family and friends in Germany that wanted to join them in the New World, but their farms became too small to accommodate more people. As the German immigrants read about Bishop Loris's assurances that he would help them buy land, build a church, and provide them with a priest, the group set out for an area west of the Mississippi River. Their new settlement was named New Vienna. Just two years later, in 1846, Bishop Loris met with another group of Germans who had emigrated to New Orleans and who had come up the Mississippi River to Dubuque. They came up the Mississippi knowing that there were Catholic settlements in the area. And when they arrived in Dubuque, that's when they talked to Bishop Loris and he said, I've got this small Catholic settlement. Uh, it's only 30 miles from here. And that's how they ended up coming just to the north of, of, of what would become Dyersville. Again, just two years later in 1848, a Methodist Englishman named James Dyer arrived in what would become the town of Dyersville. James Dyer was from a wealthy family in England and uh, they were merchants and uh, times were getting a little tough there so James was sent out here to see if there was uh, money to be made in the new world. He left his wife and three little kids in New York somewhere with relatives and he came out uh, wrote letters back to his father. Uh, it didn't take long before uh, he bought up a huge amount of land in this area and then when his family, friends, relatives came, then farms were established and pretty soon he laid out, uh, plotted out the town. As the settlement grew, the railroad came, bringing Irish Catholics who were helping to build it. And a lot of the um, English, because they were merchants and not farmers, they eventually moved on. James actually helped to establish the town uh, to the west, which was Manchester. And again, when the railroad came through, that helped people just move on. And the English, uh, many of them did move on. At the same time, there were, it wasn't just these two settlements, there was huge amounts of Germans coming. All of these people wanted land, they wanted religious freedom, and they wanted to farm. 
By 1858, it was apparent that the Irish Catholics and the German Catholics who had settled to the north and were attending services in New Vienna needed a parish of their own. As the Catholic parish was being formed, the first donation of $50 was made by Mr. Francis Xavier Bullinger to begin the process of building a church. The progress on the church building stalled as financial problems arose, arose for the fledgling parish. Eventually, four of the original families mortgaged their farms to complete this church. Not long after, financial problems again arose when it was learned that the church had been built on lots that did not belong to the diocese. Francis Xavier Bullinger, the man who had made the first donation, donated his life savings to purchase those lots. It was at that time that the parish would be named after this gentleman's patron saint, St. Francis Xavier.